to Off Air. Hi, I'm Kara. And I'm Hannah. This week we're talking about beauty, wellness. And I was just really tired this week, so I wanted to pick a topic where I don't have to say much. <laughs> oh, so, I'm going to make you say a lot. So that's where we're at. Mm. She's our expert, and I'm just taking notes, folks, okay? <laughs> we got a lot of really good questions. We did. In fact, we even got a few questions from men. What? I know. In fact, that's what we're going to start with today. Okay. Are you ready for this? Yeah. So this question comes from Look for the Heroes. Okay. He says, what's the number one thing women like for men to do when it comes to their appearance? So he's looking to better himself mm -hmm. for the women. Oh, I feel bad saying this. Hair. I think it's hair. I want a fresh cut, good hair. Now for my bald men out there, just have a clean bald and that's good. I mean, I'm thinking Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I'd break me up a piece of that rock. But anyways, hair, yes. a good cut, okay. a good style, not too stylized. I want it to look clean, somewhat effortless. To me, that that's that seals the deal. It's so funny you say that because I was thinking about what I was gonna say and the first thing I thought of was hair. And my hair goes a little more detailed, right? Here's what I mean by that. If you're gonna have a beard, as my husband has been growing for the last year, you need to make sure that there's no hair covering the lip, yes. right? Keep it, keep it up. Yep. And then that goes for ear hair. That goes for your eyebrows. You got to keep those things. Not wily. Not wily. Not like. Yes. Okay. And then. Not that, squirrely. Squirrely. Yeah. I like that. Okay. Squirrely brows. Nape of your <laughs> neck. I'm just saying when I'm walking up to you, yes. don't let your hairs distract me. What about men who dye their hair? I don't mind men who dye their hair. If you don't know it. Oh, are you saying there if comes it's obvious, a point? No, if it's obvious. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like there's some men that dye it and it looks like they... Too dark? They like dip their head like in an equal. There may be a point when you have to start going men to see like a stylist or something. The other thing go. I would say is shoes. Shoes. Nice shoes. Nice shoes. Yeah. Okay. Shoes and hair. So really, head to toe. You're good. This is from Shannon Joe. Okay. And the question, are eyelash extensions worth it? I was so glad that Miss Shannon asked this question because I've almost gone to get them several times. Because you have good eyelashes. I do, but you, you really do. They're like they curl. You. Thank you. But I always feel like they can be more because I've worn fake and I just love that. It brings something. But you've done this. So done, what are your thoughts? I've done eyelash extensions. I did them for about a year mm -hmm. and I loved them. My thing when it comes to eyelash extensions is that I'm what they call a rough sleeper. I don't know who they are, but that's the thing. The people watching care sleep. Me meaning I sleep on my stomach with my head in the pillow. Yes. So if you have eyelash extensions doing that, that's going to make them um, pop off a little bit quicker. So the problem is, is that they, after about two weeks, it was, it, it started to look kind of sparse. So could you redo them every two weeks? You can go back for a refill every couple of weeks, but the problem is it's expensive. The money. It adds up. I've heard that if you get them, you'll lose your actual eyelashes. Like as they fall out, the glue or whatever will take out your natural ones. Did you ever see that? I never had that experience, but I really felt like the woman who was doing them knew how to apply them. Yeah. She also made sure that she was putting the correct length and the correct, because the length that they're too long, they're adding weight. And that's what's causing your eyelashes to like pop off, your real eyelashes to break off. So I would say eyelash extensions are definitely worth a try. Okay. Um, and I think it's just how you're going to maintain. When you wash your face, if you're a scrubber, you can't scrub your eyes. You, you can't, you have to make sure you're using eye makeup remover that has no oil base in it. There's a lot of things you have to do to increase how long they last. I had a viewer message and ask about our skin cleaning regimen because I mean, everybody needs that, but we wear a lot of makeup. Yeah, I gotta hear on the story. Mm -hmm. And my regimen started about two months ago. When I would tell facialists that, it was like I just confessed to murdering someone. You just had bad habits like a lot of people is what you're saying. Yes. You're not the only one who does that. Thank you. But you are one of few that will admit it. I'm admitting it right here, but I've stopped. When I started washing my face, Kara can attest to this, I started getting these compliments. People going, what are you doing? By men. By men, yeah, one of our coworkers, he noticed, and if a dude notices, you know like there's actually been a change. And I turned to him and I said, I am practicing proper hygiene. <laughs> and washing my face. And it's crazy. I know, you, but you your skin looks lying. really good. Thank you. Okay, this is from Westfall PR. She wanted to know, what is something you splurge on? 
and I loved your answer. Okay, so, so what is your perfect world splurge on skincare? I would love, 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 love to get a facial once a week. I'm telling you, that's why Jennifer Aniston, JLo, all these women look the way they do in their late 40s, early 50s. They have mm -hmm. the professionals working on them at least once a week. Because they're doing all the icky extraction stuff. Yes. And, yeah, okay. I'm like buzzing it down, and I just love a facial. A once a week, can you imagine? We would just be glowing. Okay, so to get rid of all this makeup. Okay, we do wear a lot. Yeah, a lot. And we've retouched up like 12 times today. <laughs> yes, so it's layers and layers. Um, it's like when you uh, get rid of the um, wallpaper, it's and you see all the other wallpaper underneath. Yeah. That's our faces at the end of the day. So what I do, coconut oil with a really hot washcloth, it just peels it away. Really random, weird story. I'm from Wichita, Kansas, so is Kirstie Alley. She's friends with my mom. She's the one that told me this, and I said, if a movie star does it, then a local news reporter should. So you just warm it up like in the microwave? Or no, what do you, no, no, all you, so you take it out and okay. it's kind of in the firm uh, or the, you know, like yeah, it's firm hard. substance. Okay. And then you rub it around and then you take that really hot wet washcloth and you wipe it off. And it feels so good. You feel your skin breathe. It's amazing. Then after that, I'll do my exfoliant and then I'll add my serum, my moisturizer. And then I go to bed and I feel like a real adult because I've, Kind of taking care of myself. I'm gonna have to try that. I've never done that before. I, love I think it. I've been scared, but I've heard people say it's so good for you. Yeah, and it's so good and it's so cheap and it's so easy. But I do that and then I do the cleansing, but this just gets everything off. As far as like a, what was the question again? Oh, <laughs> how do you clean your skin? Where are we at? <laughs> what day is it? <laughs> Who am I? So I said if I had to pick a splurge, it would be vitamin C serum, and I use currently. 20%, it's 20% vitamin C serum. That's what the bottle says. This is something that I was told um, by a skincare specialist that it like, it acts as like a block. So it like blocks all the free radicals that are out in the world trying to attack your skin. And it's like the protective barrier that, that goes over it. One of the fun things about our job is that sometimes we have people come in and do our makeup, right? Mm -hmm. So the woman doing my makeup, she was like, oh, your skin looks awesome, but your eyes look really old. And I was like, Dang, but sometimes you gotta tell it like it is, so I just listened to her, okay. and she said I needed to be using under eye cream, and at the time, I was like in my mid-20s. Yeah. She said that you need to start using under eye like cream, like a really light one, starting when you're 20 years old. And I agree with that. I was way behind. I, but see, that's what I don't like about saying ages. I just say start it now. Uh, let's talk hair. We both have very different kinds of hair. Yes. Let's talk about your hair, Hannah. I will speak for the curly girls out there because you curly girls, you know, nobody understands our hair. Um, I live in North Texas. Mm -hmm. Humidity is a thing. Yeah. I start with a nice sleek look. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. By the end of the day. <laughs> I always compare it to this. I say it's like roadkill that came to life. And you're watching it come to life live on TV. So tune in. You're really going to want to see that. It's bigger and bigger. But I have learned how to kind of manage this kind of hair. I really like to wear it curly when I can. But with curls, you never know what you're going to get. You kind of roll the dice. So I don't like to do that for TV. Mm -hmm. Some days it's really great. Other days it looks like I put my finger in a light socket. What is that? I don't know. If I could, pre if I knew what I was gonna get, I would totally rock a curly. But on the days that I actually blow it out, the key to the humidity, I was telling Kara this, and mm -hmm. this blew her mind, it's oil. It's tons of oil, grease, whatever you wanna call it, coconut oil. I've even used olive oil before. I know, because I looked at her and I said, well, what about VO5 oil? And she was like, mm, mm -hmm. no. No, that doesn't do it. That's, that's fake oil. I have none of those same problems. So I my know. hair is super fine. Can I touch it? Yeah. Is that you? It's not super fine. Doesn't oh, yours is definitely you. coarse. I know, it's totally different. It is fine. It's got a lot of product in it right now. But it's thick. It's thick. Yeah. That's the worst. Yeah. Because it tangles very easily. So I have to do a, a leave-in conditioner um, that I spray in before I even blow it out. Yeah. And then I put um, like a blow drying cream and then a volumizer <laughs> mousse and then I blow it out and then I gotta tease it with a teaser brush and then I put a volumizing <laughs> spray. It's bananas. There's so much product in this hair, it's crazy. But it doesn't feel like that. That was gonna be my one question for you. Your hair holds, but it's not like helmet hair. 
How do you get like that kind of hold? There is a fine line, and yeah. I have achieved helmet hair on many occasions. <laughs> <laughs> if you can dig up some photos and put them right here, this one. Oh, dead. what did you tell me earlier? I was saying that Kara does really good hair on air. It's not like your anchor lady like helmet. And she said, "Oh, I I can have that." And I said, "No, for the last two years, it's been really good." which by omission I meant two years before that, maybe not so much. Mm -hmm. The last two years, it's been really good. <laughs> I finally got the hang of it. You have. Thank you for your honesty. Anytime. It really comes down to the right product and not using too much of it. These next questions are a little less superficial. The next question is, what is the most attractive quality in a person? So a man or woman, and maybe it's different depending on the gender, but what's the one thing? I saw your notes. She wrote down what she was gonna say. <laughs> and I'm kind of mad. I'm mad at your notes because I like that. I'm not gonna steal yours, what I'm gonna say. And this goes for either gender, confidence. I think about some famous men that, like if I walked past them on the street, I wouldn't turn my head, but it's that confidence, that swagger. It's not cocky if it's true. Oh, <laughs> I think Justin Timberlake said that, which now I'm rethinking everything. That did not sound like an Oprah thing to say. It wasn't. So, okay. It was not. What did I say for mine? Oh. Humor. Yeah. If you watch any of these videos, I laugh a ton. Not first date. <laughs> Brag much? <laughs> yes, yes. That exists. <laughs> Next Beyonce. For <laughs> one thing. Let's go to Vegas. <laughs> Three tops. <laughs> take a nap. Go take a nap. That's so he's mine. like the bloat in your face? <laughs> <laughs> he keeps me bloated. Yes, you do. I do laugh a lot. And I love your laugh. I do like a good sense of humor. I mean, really, if you can have a good sense of humor yeah. and if you can be funny, I, not funny in an annoying way, just like funny. I mean this in no disrespect. I love the show Seinfeld. But if you saw the women that Jerry and George were bagging, they, they had no business being in the same room as those women. But? But it's the sense of humor. I just love that you could wiggle in a Seinfeld reference because that show is the best. I know. Or, to one-up it, curb your enthusiasm, Larry David. Ooh. I actually think Larry David is sexy. Because he's so funny. Funny. And smart. And confident. Cocky a little bit. Yeah. Okay. And he okay. drives a Prius. Okay. I've got a type. So if you had like a huge, big diesel truck, that would totally turn you off? Yeah, it would. <laughs> I didn't know where she was going with that. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> okay. When we talk about trucks, Woo! it's a little crazy. It's a little crazy. Yeah, what's the next question? <sighs> okay, moving on. This next question that came to us was asking about products to use for acne prone skin or skin with acne. Let me just tell you right now that I can empathize with anyone who has acne. Be quiet, don't make a face. Because I suffered from cystic acne for years in my mid and late 20s. Really? So cystic acne, if anyone knows, it's these huge lumps that you get, usually like on your chin or right here. And it almost looks like a cyst under mm -hmm. your skin. It's embarrassing. They're painful. They never really come. It's not like a pimple popper. They never popper. pop. I no. get them every once in a while. Yeah. It's bleh. Yeah. So I can relate to that. And I had to do a lot of different things. And then part of it was just over time. So you're not only struggling with like cystic acne, but then you're trying to do anti-aging. I'm like, how do these two coincide? They don't. That's not right. So here's my thing for you. If you are looking for a product, make sure it has salicylic acid in it. That helps with the acne. And then hyaluronic acid adds that moisture back into your skin so that it doesn't get all dried out. I'm telling you, my skin was like, mm mm. It looks good now. It's better now because of all the stuff I do. Actually taking care of yourself. See? It's amazing. Imagine that. So we overrode your suggestions. We asked you guys, do you want to hear beauty um, fails or beauty successes? You guys all said beauty successes. Uh, sorry, that's boring. So uh, Hannah's is first, and it's actually really funny, but it goes back to the whole hair scenario. Yeah. So my hair, um, it'll kind of stay in place, you know? It doesn't move all the time. And I think it was two episodes ago. Mm -hmm. I thought I was looking cute. I, you did look cute. I did look. From I, the... I look cute like this. Straight on. Adorable. Just mm, had it all together. As soon as I turned like this, I had a, I call it my crispy rat tail. 
was dangling. Not even dangling because it didn't move. To me, the crispy rat tail was talking the whole time. It wasn't me. <laughs> well, isn't it your, your fiance who has commented on that before? It angers him almost. <laughs> it angers him? <laughs> yeah, because it falls out. He's like, do something with that. I think he thinks I'm doing it intentionally, <laughs> like putting the rat tail down. I'm not. In life, sometimes crispy rat tails are going to happen. Uh, I will say that not too long ago, I went and had a facial similar to what Hannah had. Actually, not similar, the exact same facial. And I loved it. And your skin was glowing. Mm -hmm. Guess what? I woke up the next day. It was like somebody took like um, an air pump and just her face. <laughs> she sent me a picture. And I felt really bad because my immediate reaction was just to laugh out loud. I felt bad, but it looked like something, it looked like makeup out of a movie. It was so weird, like my eyes were puffy. <laughs> She's laughing still. This was just a facial. So here's my warning or maybe advice. Heads up. You need to ask, what all's going into this? And maybe I shouldn't do it, or maybe I have a sensitivity to it. It was, I think it was glycolic acid. I feel like we're talking about acid a lot, but like glycolic acid that I think just poof. It took me 10 days. It was memorable. I peeled, I had to get a steroid cream. It was rough. That's All right. Tough. That's it for Off Air today. Uh, hey, if you like what you saw, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. Mm -hmm. And we appreciate the feedback, good and bad, but really good. Yeah, just, just send the good. You can send her the bad. <laughs> Me, the good, her the bad. Thank you. Okay, we got that clarified. Okay, that's it. I guess we'll see you next time.